Hello everyone. So what we are going to do today, we are starting our data engineering journey because what I have seen at the moment is a lot of uh, uh, demands in the in the in the industry as well as uh, in 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 the in the student community uh, to to learn the the data engineering skills because the the organizations they are providing lots and lots of requirement that okay we need a demand for for the data engineers and you know people are uh, still not uh, uh, understanding where where the line has been drawn between the traditional database development and the the data engineering. So I thought it would be good to have a, a, you know uh, a good comprehensive course for you. So if you can uh, learn these skills, you can go and you can apply to to any organization uh, for 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 the data engineering job. And uh, don't underestimate data engineering job. I think data engineering is now over writing data science uh, jobs at the moment. People are shifting from data science to data engineering because like you have uh, heard about that famous quote from the New York Times, uh, the I think one of the the, uh, the tech lead of the New York Times, he mentioned that 80% uh, of the data scientist time has been consumed in cleaning the data or preparing the data instead of you know running the, the data science activities. And only 20% of the time uh, our data scientists are focusing on 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 the the actual uh, actual data science activities, which is a shame. Uh, and and uh, I can understand it is the it's, the challenge is not with the technology. The challenge is with with the with the nature of the data uh, and how it has been managed and you know all the factors that that uh, effect on the on the data within the organizational uh, landscape these these factors actually make it very challenging to you know to to uh, prepare the data uh, in a in a shape that it can be feed into the model and get the right outcome out of it and i think uh, if i remember i've discussed uh, in 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 my articles and in my previous videos that the uh, handling the data or managing the data is a full time job and it requires the attention from each and every person within the organization so it's more like we have an asset that everyone needs to to to, to commit to you know uh, to to safeguard or to to contribute that that's now the 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 new new world of the data is like you cannot think oh I have the other jobs I, I my priorities are different. Uh, Trust me, if you really want to turn into the data-driven organization, then each and every person of the organization needs to be uh, to be part of, you know, uh, part of uh, uh, the, the the team who is managing and who is looking after the data because the data is now going to be the new electricity or coal or oil, whatever you want to call it. That's the one who's going to now drive the machinery of, of the of the organization. And the data engineers, they are on, on the driving seat. No, no doubt they, they are providing the 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 uh, the major contribution in in running the uh, the 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 machinery of the of the enterprise but obviously there, there are many other other uh, i would say team member who are making sure the 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 uh, the uh, organizational vehicle is up and it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, perfect in all shapes so it runs uh, as per the the, the demand of, of of the organization so but that that's a high level introduction of data engineering now we'll jump straight into our uh, slides and then we'll see a quick introduction uh for 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 the data engineering and then we we'll start our course with our first demo which is quite exciting so let me just spin up my PowerPoint, hopefully it will, yeah, I can see it now. Share my screen, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to share screen too. Yeah, 
So you can see uh, what we are going to do in, 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 in this course, uh, we have uh, two major technology stack. We're gonna see uh, SQL and SQL, don't confuse it with Azure SQL or, or simple uh, SQL Server. SQL is a, is a, is a uh, uh, universal language for, for the data. If you want to speak, the, uh, speak with the data, you need to speak the SQL language and SQL language will help you to talk to the, talk to the, uh, uh, the any kind Kind of data uh, set which is in the in the structured format. Uh, on the other side, we have uh, another gentleman called Spark, and Spark is more like the unified uh, is a the multi language stack to handle large uh, 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 data and analytics. So with these two, if you learn these two skills, you are going to be a champion in 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 the in the data engineering field, and you can handle any kind of data within all type of organization uh, imagine how how cool it is so let's first see what data engineering is all right so data engineering is uh, as a, def a definition because obviously uh, formally we, we need to uh, we need to define the data engineering before we proceed so it's a set of operation aimed at creating interfaces and mechanism for the flow and access of uh, the of information the the uh, that that's the uh, definition that was given by alex soft uh, they they are uh, actively working in the in the in the standards and and the pattern of, of the, the, the the data engineering and you know uh, data science field and what it actually uh, uh, provide it uh, or does it maintain enterprise data in a way that is available and used by the business users the data scientists or machine learners or you know machine uh, machine le uh, learning engineers and the business executives so imagine they they are making sure the data flow and the interfaces whatever they are creating for for the data flow data flow is uh, is is uh, uh, is moving the data from source to the de destination in a way that it is available for uh, for all kind of you know uh, for all kind of users of of the business now I think the definition will be more explainable through this diagram. So let's spin up this diagram and let's talk about this diagram. So you can see data engineering life cycle. We can see we have multiple data sources and it can be any application which is producing the data. Application or you know an interface or external or internal API and now even a sensor. If we are collecting the data from a sensor, then that sensor is also behaving as a as a source. And with the introduction or with the uh, the the practical uh, consumption of the IoT device, all these smart devices which we are now using uh, uh, in our day to day life. IoT is also becoming a source for providing the data and it provides really big data very quickly, you know, because the data is continuously transmitting towards the towards the storage. Uh, so suddenly we have now that big data which is coming from these IoT devices, right? So we which we normally store in our data lakes and then we you know uh, consume it into 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 our uh, our data platform. Uh, uh, although this diagram has been uh, uh, built based on the Azure based technology, but you can convert the same because the concept is same. Uh, the architecture is going to be the same. Only the, the components can be replaced. So the same diagram uh, 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 has been uh, 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 used from, from the AWS perspective or from the Google perspective. It's all about the services are going to be different uh, by name, or, but the nature of the services, I would say that that's gonna be remain uh, uh, same. Uh, with Azure, I would say one advantage uh, which Microsoft is providing, Microsoft is putting so much effort to, you know, to simplify things for us, like they are taking lots and lots uh, on their shoulder, which is obviously uh, takes some of the power, but the way the, the, the industry is moving, and most especially with the small and medium enterprises, we don't have, you know, the every year million dollars to invest in the data capability. At least for those organizations, the Azure is the best option because then they can still go and use, you know, all these these capabilities which Microsoft has provided um, uh, as part of their platform. 
uh, uh, and they are handling lot, lots and lots of things on, 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 on their uh, uh, behalf. And all you need to, you know, just put your uh, stuff in and you start utilizing it. And obviously, uh, we're going to see all these in action. It's not only the theory. Uh, the second uh, layer is the, the most critical one, the, which is responsible for uh, handling the data, data flow. And you can see, like I mentioned, IoT is now, it's no more like a conceptual thing. It is now uh, uh, used in the industry. We have the sensors and we can, and we can use those sensors to, to transmit the data. You know what I'm going to do uh, at later stage, what we'll do, we'll, we'll just, you know, run, run, uh, run a solution which can get the data from one of the IoT device and you know we'll see how we can store it and you know use it for, for the analysis purposes. Uh, Event Hub is more like the live streaming because the, we have two sort of flow where we run uh, in the batch mode where we uh, load the data uh, once or twice or it really depends the print frequency depends upon the the requirement of the business we load the data uh, uh, on demand uh, given by the business where we run the etl and we make sure uh, the the uh, etl or extract transform load uh, happen and load the data into corresponding uh, uh, storage uh, container or we have a continuous stream which is you know which is giving us a continuous speed of our data so we can see some live live uh, uh, analytics or live movement of, of the data so that that is called streaming and uh, all the the major cloud providers uh, like microsoft they are now providing the streaming capabilities through through uh, their native services especially aws you're going to see the kinesis uh, which is based on the kafka in 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 uh, Azure, we have the event uh, hub, uh, which provide the live streaming capabilities as well. And similar, I believe we have a similar in, in Google, not on top of my mind, uh, too many uh, terms to remember. Next layer is the, the data storage layer, which is obviously uh, right now we are talking Azure. So we have obviously different kind of data. We have Azure based uh, uh, data warehouse, uh, which is Synapse, uh, a beautiful, uh, great service, uh, I can go on and on in, in the praise of the Synapse because what I'm seeing it, uh, the way it has been developed, it is providing, you know, a, a one uh, uh, interface or one platform for all kind of, you know, uh, data related activities. Like imagine you, you have one studio environment where you can build, you know, uh, the 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 big data set and you can build this small data set and even you know you can uh, you can go and you can uh, build the data pipelines and you can connect it with the uh, the data governance tool uh, and everything has been integrated within within the one uh, one single environment so how great it is oh by the way and you can use that data within the within the power bi with, by remaining in the in the same environment. So you don't need to shift into multiple services. What you can do, you can stick to one studio environment and everything is available there. Imagine your version control, uh, your Git uh, 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 hub, or what, which is obviously in Azure, uh, it's called Azure DevOps instance is fully integrated. So you don't need to worry about the version controlling of, of, your, of your code. Uh, you can uh, 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 spin up the, the Spark notebooks. You can spin up the, the serverless uh, queries. Uh, if you have, want to just, you know, Query the data which is sitting uh, on on your data lake, and you can even you know store the data, big data sets, even uh, terabytes or petabytes of data uh, uh, sets within within the uh, Synapse instance. So things are really changing. Let me tell you, things are changing very quickly, especially within the within the cloud environment. And obviously, uh, 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 if you don't have these kind of big data demands, you can still use the Azure SQL, which we're gonna uh, see in, in the, in the demo uh, shortly. See uh, Cosmos DB, we're gonna see Cosmos DB in action. It is the NoSQL uh, data service provided by Microsoft. Uh, and we have a similar one available from from AWS, which is the Dynamo DB. Uh, the 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 uh, the technology is great. Like the concept is great. If you if you don't like the limitation of the structure query language or you know the structure architecture that the the SQL databases are providing, you want the flexibility. So you have you know 
you can uh, store the data in a in a more flexible way and then retrieve it quickly. Uh, that that's where Cosmos DB comes into the picture. Uh, 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 keep in mind, Cosmos DB actually uh, uh, eliminate the 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 concept of normalization and you know joining. So you because you know once we join the table, that that's an expensive operation where we need to uh, we need to go and trace that. Okay, what records are join, uh, available on both sides so we can join them and we can spin up the the full data set and that requires some time. Uh, especially depending upon the data side. So with, with uh, Cosmos or NoSQL database, they literally eliminate this saying, okay, these things are not required. We can go with the denormalization. And you know, another concept we have in the in the in the relational database, like you need uh, you need to store only one uh, value in, in one cell. Uh, on on the table, uh, Cosmos or NoSQL is overriding that uh, that that uh, 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 clause as well, and it provides the capability to store the array of values. What is array of values? We'll see uh, later. It's more like the introduction, uh, and then last but not the least is our data visualization layer, which provides us the capabilities to to present our data because obviously the users are not going to understand the data which is sitting in the in the table until unless they have the the sql skills or they understand how to to uh, run the run the script but normally the that layer is feeding to to each and every department of the organization that include xx uh, uh, you know uh, and they they use the the dashboard built in power bi to see okay how how things are moving and that will help them to to make the DCN. Excel is the most widely used uh, front-end tool uh, still in, in most of the organization. Uh, so, you know, they can they can connect to our storage there and they can consume the data if someone needs it. And that, that's where uh, I would say uh, uh, self-service comes partially into the picture because uh, self-service organization, uh, what they do, they literally uh, build the, the platform and they provide uh, the uh, the, uh, the 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 data sets in a way that the the front end layer people who or business user who want to consume the data instead of you know waiting for IT to build the, the last layer they go and they start you know building their own data set which is required by them and then they start using it so now imagine how much time it's gonna take off from from our shoulder if business you know through so self service they they can take the responsibility of of the data visualization layer. So that that's uh, that's all about the 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 data engineering lifecycle. I thought it would be good to actually explain it with a proper architecture so you can understand. Now that that's quite a big uh, commitment. Tell you the truth, and that that's why this skill is highly uh, demanded in the in the in the market. Don't get me wrong. Data engineering is not like uh, something uh, simple, or you can say something uh, which is only linked with one or two, you know, technologies uh, or tools. Data engineering is more like it encompasses on on multiple, uh, I would say, uh, 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 skills or or technologies. And you can see in this this picture. Uh, in last five ten minutes, how much we have discussed regarding regarding the architecture. But don't worry, we're gonna do all these things step by step. All right. So the required skill, most uh, organization, what they are looking, they are looking someone who is expert in SQL and Spark. And why I pick these two languages? Because, like I mentioned, SQL is a universal language of the data. Like all, all the all uh, the vendors they are providing. Spark, on the other hand, it's providing you know uh, advanced capabilities to handling you know large data set which we cannot store within the SQL environment. Uh, uh, so so that that's why actually these pick two. If you cover these two, you are most likely ready for any kind of data engineering job. Okay, let's discuss one by one. So SQL is a native language to speak with any kind of structured data. Uh, there's only one limitation that the data has to be structured if you want to use SQL. And that, that's why we need the Spark. Once we go to Spark, we'll uh, look into it. Uh, it the uh, SQL itself is available with all kind of database uh, 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 vendors or software. They are providing the SQL interface, so you can write SQL queries to, to talk to to talk to that uh, uh, that database software. 
it provides the uh, advanced data and analytic uh, capabilities like you can build you know you can build a good uh, data warehouse or data marts and then they can go and they can be used as a as a source for you know for the analytics that can be generated through through the through the front end tool for for, for the business uh, and you will be surprised sql is a language of no sql as well previously it uh, was happening that you know the NoSQL software, they were not providing the SQL interface. They have a different language that they use to, to interact with, with the, uh, the NoSQL software. But now with, uh, they realize that they also need to provide SQL interface, at least uh, uh, some part of SQL interface to their NoSQL software. So people who already know SQL, they can reutilize their skill instead of you know, learning a new skill. So that, that's a big shift. And we, especially once we go I discuss cosmos we're gonna look into it multiple uh, spark it's a multiple language engine for large scale the data and analytics the beauty of the spark compared to sql it provide you multiple option and we'll try to uh, look into uh, three major option pi spark uh, Scala, which is the, the, the language that has been used to build Spark and uh, SQL. So imagine Spark itself has a, a SQL uh, interface that you can use to, to, to talk to, to, to uh, you know, all kind of data and analytic, uh, uh, analytics uh, uh, um, engine uh, the, to, through Spark, right? So that, uh, that, that's, uh, that's, the, uh, uh, that's one of the major reasons why, uh, why we are studying uh, Spark besides SQL. Well, Apache Spark is a multiple language engine for handling large data and analytics available in analytical stack of major cloud provider uh, with both SQL and, and, the, and the Spark. The great news, you know, previously uh, we have seen the, the, there's, a, there's a blocker that we were unable to use uh, uh, these these uh, languages because we don't have the environment now with the data breaks uh, the 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 great news is that we have all these environment available from the dev perspective so if you want to practice anything there's uh, there's a community edition available uh, in 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 data breaks which we're gonna utilize uh, once we are running all the Spark code and the SQL you can configure either uh, on on the on the on the on the free uh, service of of Azure or, or AWS or Google, or you can you know in, uh, set up the virtual environment on your computer and use it from there. So that, that that's the great thing, and you will see how quickly it will help you to you know become an expert or specialize into into these two skills. Uh, with Spark, major connectors and interfaces are available to for integrating heterogeneous uh, data sources. Like you know, you can use Spark to connect to databases, to APIs, uh, to all sort of you know uh, 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 data set which are available in the in the in the market. And you know, it also provides the capabilities to connect to IoT devices through so, so the, the 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 interface that you can build. Because remember, within the Spark, it's not like only the query that you can uh, uh, create you can build the the, the programs or uh, uh, you know a full-fledged analytical programs as well because spark is a language and programming language provide you all the development capabilities that you need to to build these application Another big plus of, of this Spark over all other languages in the market, all the machine learning frameworks uh, like TensorFlow or PyTorch or, or you know, uh, and I think the, the, even the Python uh, 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 scikit-learn, they are all uh, integrated within, within the Spark environment. So you don't need to, you know, uh, export your code or write a code separately. You can execute all these framework within, within the Spark environment. And last but not the least, that Spark can also be used behind uh, uh, behind all these fancy dashboard software like Power BI, Tableau, Looker, et cetera. It can provide the data to, 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 to these, uh, these Power BI dashboard to present it to, to, the, to, the, to the user, uh, to the business. Besides that, uh, Spark support all those uh, uh, open source uh, uh, dashboarding or charting or graphing uh, uh, applications 
components which are available in the in the market like you can use all Py, uh, python based you know uh, 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 dashboarding uh, uh, stack like uh, uh, if i remember uh, matplotlib and we have you know uh, d3 and we have uh, i think so there, there are a couple of more which are really good in terms of you know uh, using it. So imagine that Spark literally bring everything on 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 uh, on one platform under one umbrella. So that's pretty much it uh, for 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 the for the theoretical knowledge and introduction of of the of the Spark and SQL. And in the next video, we're gonna have our demo for for both environment, and we just run small thing just to understand how whatever we have discussed how it looks like within within the practical environment so thanks for watching and stay tuned for for, for more videos